Hello, welcome to New Media Tech. This is, uh, I think, episode 17, and we're going to kind of continue down where we started off last week. I've gotten a lot of questions, had a few complaints, because <laughs> I basically said internet marketing was scum. Well, I didn't mean that all of them are scum. I have some friends that do internet marketing still, and I think they're only up and up. Um, but in general, um, I didn't really mean to uh, offend anybody, so we'll talk about that a little bit here uh, as well. So the other thing we're going to cover is we're going to start moving into our remote guest solutions, and this is becoming a very timely topic for us because this other project that I was hoping to tell you about this week, but it's going to be next week because we're going to go live with this Wednesday, um, is going to need some remote guest solutions. And we, I've been looking into them, and I'm trying to figure out how to take phone calls. Uh, in addition to, I mean, we were already pretty decent with Skype and a couple other options for remote. So we're going to talk about what we do now and kind of what I'm looking for. Um, there's some software that I'm trying to get an evaluation license for, so I can show it to you. It's a little expensive. Um, actually, it's a lot expensive for software. <laughs> but for what it does, it seems like it's very neat. So I'm looking forward to maybe trying to get an evaluation copy and... Uh, doing a demonstration on the air and doing a little review of it. Uh, and it's for taking calls, remote calls. It's all software. It runs over voice over IP. It just works on a, uh, on well, what I'm doing using on a Mac. I think that's the only version they have out right now is for a Mac. But um, it basically even does call recording. So if you want to take multiple line phone calls and pre-record it so and play it back on the air, it's all built into the software. Um, not exactly how I'm going to use it, but uh, that's a very neat option. And I'm going to talk about the solution I'm going to use at least initially to take uh, guest calls, multi-line calls. Um, and I have it almost set up and working. So I can pretty much tell you about how I'm going to do it, at least initially. Uh, and it's not using a physical phone or hybrid system. And it was um, something that I was talking with a friend of mine and just kind of stuck in my head. But before we get too far in, what I want to do is... Um, kind of remind you, I'm going to bring this up here and show you that uh, we are moving our YouTube channel. And I've been talking about this for like the next couple of weeks. Well, actually, one more week. It'll be the last time you hear me get on this drone about going to youtube.com slash TV and subscribing over there if you're on the new Media Tech channel, the old one. Because one more week, next week will be the last week we put up there. And from that point forward, it'll all be on this new channel. And it's on the lower third beneath us here. And uh, go there and subscribe now so that um, you don't miss anything. So I'll remind you again when we end of the show, but I know if you've been watching the show, we've been harping harping on it a lot. And I also want to make sure that you're aware that we have a, uh, a website. You can go and get all our show notes. We update it every week with a new video. You can go to uh, newmediatech.tv, or you can just go to tech-send.tv and... Um, Get the show notes there. You can go up and you can see all of our other shows as well. We've got lots of other shows. If you like this show, you're probably going to like some of them too. So I would definitely like you to go to the, sh the page and check out some of our other shows. And one last thing before we go into all this, our Twitter account is also moving, and we're all going to use the Tech Zen TV, and we're going to start using hashtags, and you'll start seeing that on these shows too. The hashtag will be uh, like a bug somewhere on the screen, something like that. Um, and that's how we're going to separate our Twitter accounts. Uh, it's as far as what you're interested in because it's uh, it goes back to the same thing we talked about a couple weeks ago where it's just easier for us to manage one on account and it's cross promotion. So if you're following us on Twitter, you're going to see the other shows too. And we don't blast out lots of garbage. So it's not like you're going to, we're going to get bombarded with all the different shows. We pretty much just keep it to show related stuff and, uh, and other announcements. So, uh, all right. So. Next, we talked about monetization, and I mentioned in there that I used to do internet marketing, and I kind of get out of it because, well, first of all, people were undercutting, selling things that used to be sold for forty-nine, forty-seven dollars, down to nine and seven dollars, and uh, and just repurposed uh, stuff. I mean, they probably much were buying it for a couple bucks, and they're putting their name on it and selling it for seven bucks, and it was probably originally stolen from somebody else who was charging forty-nine dollars for it. So it just came down to this thing where it got a little bit sleazy. Underhanded tricks, I don't want to call it black hat, black hat uh, tricks um, are still around today, although it's much harder. Uh, the biggest person that we used to do black hat stuff with was Google, and they've gotten uh, much smarter, which is good because it was being very unfair to the uh, end user and other people as well. But there's still black hat people, white hat people out there. Uh, and you can buy services from, but that's not really the reason I got out. I got out because people were stealing stuff, selling it for a third of the price or a quarter of the price, 
and it got very uh, sleazy and felt like this, like when you went to buy something, um, it was very low quality and you people were starting to look for the lowest cost stuff instead of the best quality stuff. And just one of those things where um, I have I had a strong belief in providing quality material for, you know, not necessarily the best price. That's how the whole idea. If my quality is better than somebody else, my price can be higher. And just one of those things where it, uh, with all the undercutting and people starting to look for pricing uh, instead of the quality, it just wasn't worth dealing with that stuff anymore. Um, and that was mainly for the teaching material on teaching people how to uh, internet on, on the mar market on the internet, which, um, you know, that's what everybody seems they want to get into when they first start because it's, it's something they're, they're reading about and they want to do it. And nobody was being creative with their own little niches and everything. Anyways, I wasn't saying that all people that do internet marketing were, were scums or anything because they're not. Um, it's just very scammy. It feels like to me, uh, even even now, if I go out and look around for stuff, it just feels that way. Um, the, my friends typically that, that do that, um, other than maybe one or two of them, don't even do internet marketing anymore. They just do other niches. Um, so it's not like it used to be. Uh, it's just different. So that was all I was trying to say. That's why I got out of it. It felt like it was, uh, uh, I didn't want to be associated with that type of person. So. Um, I do still sell things on the internet. I just don't teach it anymore. So I, I got out of the teaching part of uh, the internet marketing. So anyway, sorry about that. I didn't mean to offend anybody. Um, so we talked about some monetization last week, and we're going to continue this probably in the next couple weeks because we're working on a couple of things um, outside of this show with one of our other shows. In fact, the show comes up after this one at 9 uh, tonight. Let's make it. We're actually putting a store up, a whole different way of monetizing than selling advertising. And uh, we're still getting this site up. Uh, I have my web developer working on the other project that I've been telling you about that I don't, I can't tell you about until at least Wednesday. Um, and he hasn't had a chance to finish the store. But we got everything. We got everything for the store. We got the, the boards and the parts and everything. We even got the static bags and all the shipping and everything ready to go. So, um, but we'll go through that a little bit more. It's just another way of monetizing. And that's the way actually I would prefer to monetize because we're creating something fun for the people for fun too. It's not just for advertising. Although I don't think it's advertising because I definitely would you know, accept any advertising on a show. So, um, but we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And some of the things we looked at, uh, as far as a store goes to monetize as well on different payment systems. Uh, it was a lot of research on our part. We looked at, uh, Squarespace initially and was probably the way I was going to go based on, I mean, I already use Squarespace for other sites, my personal blog, my wife's blog, we're all on Squarespace. Um, uh, a couple other companies that I own have their sites on Squarespace. So we're very familiar with them and they're great to work with. So we looked at them as being an option for, for our site too. And we were like this close to choosing them as the solution because they have everything combined in the one. There's nothing else you got to worry about when you sign up for, with them. Everything is combined. You pay a flat rate. There's no per month fee. Um, there's no per percentage fee per transaction. So it was a, a great solution. We ended up going with something that's built into our CMS and actually does a little bit more than what the solution at um, Squarespace did. And allows us, gives us a little bit more control integration with the things we already have, which is why we went this way. But we looked at a bunch of different options. We're going to talk about some of those different options for managing that. Where um, we already have payment gateways, but we may just end up using PayPal or Google because the fees are about the same and it's a little bit easier. So we're going to talk about some payment gateway pop possibilities for monetizing as well. Uh, obviously, the sim simplest one is either like Google Wallet or uh, PayPal. There's a fee associated with every transaction, but there's, they do everything. They do credit cards. People have PayPal accounts. They're familiar with them, trust them. So um, that's probably our initial way we're going to go. Um, do we use the payment gateway? I don't know. Maybe we just want to stick with PayPal and let them handle all the transactions. So we have to go. We're still deciding on those little pieces yet. So that's all coming. Now, um, I mentioned before about the monetization that's like, I don't call it monetization really. It's like advertising monetization where you have a service that you offer somebody and you're using the show to advertise that service and basically you're building credibility. So as you sit in front of a camera like this, you're building credibility on the things that you're talking about. So we go out and install uh, studios. We teach people how to do videos. Um, we do them for them as well. And us having this to point them to, and we can also send them to some other previous, you know, clients as a reference. And they'll also, we have some previous clients that are very nice letting people take tours as well. If they want to see uh, what we've done for them. 
and we actually have video tours we can send somebody, all that kind of stuff. So this is used in a way for us as a reference kind of, because we sit here and we, you know, you can see that we kind of know what we're talking about. Well, we just pretend we know what we're talking about. And uh, it's just another way of doing references. Uh, and as we do like the Let's Make It show, you know, the main company, uh, Genius Ideal Studio, that's what they do, they design electronics and software. And because we have a show where we design things like this, we have the credibility and it just helps us to get customers so we can when we go into somebody we actually use that show saying you know we are the, the let's make it show and uh they can kind of see you know you have some credibility some background and it just builds it up so it's 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 advertising in a way and it's a monetization in a way because it just makes a sale much easier it gives you a lot of credibility in fact that's where most of the companies we go in that do a studio and do a live show whether no matter what it's like is their whole reason is to get the word out and they do it socially so it's a whole the new media they want to put videos out and give them some credibility and um whether they do a show or they do recordings and put them out on youtube or wherever they're using the studio for multiple things like that and they're doing it to put their name out there not to advertise most of them don't do advertising at all they only are putting out their own stuff and uh, it's a whole different model if you're trying to sell something though if you're a company trying to sell something you're selling your own stuff not selling other people's stuff so it's a whole different direction for monetization if you're somebody who just wants to make money i was told this, this last week if you're just getting into this to make money it's going to take you a while can you do it I absolutely sure can and if you're lucky you can do it really quick but the likelihood is it's going to take you months and months I would say at a minimum six months to a year before you start seeing any kind of regular revenue of any kind coming in. Unless, again, I mentioned last week, unless you're very specific to a particular niche that you are already, people are already familiar with you in. And then you may be able to get something a, a little quicker than that. So it all really depends. Um, I also had a question about monetizing by putting banner ads on your webpage. Yes, you can do that. However, it takes a lot. I mean, a lot of uh, traffic to make money by putting videos on your website. So do you want to do that? Well, it's your choice, really, because a lot of people don't like that. It depends on the advertising, on the kind of ads they are, too. If they're not too intrusive, like not going to blow up on top, take over the screen, then you may be just fine by, by doing that. Um, however, if there's, what's your main goal? Is your main goal to annoy the user and just make a little bit of money off the ad? Or do you want to keep the user uh, engaged? And I, I prefer to keep it engaged. Do we have banner ads? Yes, we do. We have very small ones, the bottom and one over on the right. And I've even considered taking them completely off because, again, you're not make, we're not making any money on this banner. We make so little. It's, it's like it literally is pocket change. I probably have more change in my pocket right now than what um, I would make in a month off those ads. And they're Google ads. I mean... That's something you can do. So now the other thing is, how do you monetize your YouTube channel? Well, that's not a bad option. However, again, it's depending on your purpose. So if you're trying to make money off the videos, yeah, you can do that. I typically skip the ads as soon as I can. And I think that's most people, but you're still getting the credit for the ad. Uh, we don't put ads on YouTube because that's just not how we will make money. We would rather you get right to what you're looking for and get the information you need as quickly as you can get it just so it's not an annoyance. That's that's you know our main goal is to teach you. And yeah, we do put ads into our content uh, as far as our show goes sometimes, but uh, we try also to build that into what we're talking about at the same time. So I just prefer not to have ads on YouTube. Now, if you do watch our live stream, you see ads, but they, we're not making money on those ads. It's, it's because we're using the free streaming and we've considered even going to a paid streaming service so that we don't have those ads. Um, it's just that at this point, we have no revenue to really pay for them. So we're at this point, we're going to keep it free. Uh, if we start making some revenue, that's probably one of the first things we'll do is we'll go to a no ad streaming service just because I would prefer you don't have to sit there and watch the ads on the streaming service and get interrupted. And in fact, if you're on Ustream and you're watching this, you could right in the middle of the stream, an ad pop up and take over your screen your screen, and you miss something that's important, you get to go do the download, and that just is very annoying. So um, that's something we will look to do uh, when we start getting a little more revenue into the show, or any of our shows for that matter. All right, so that's kind of what I wanted to cover and go back over since uh, last week with the monetization. 
So uh, this week, I'm going to start talking about remote guest solutions. And I mentioned in the past, we use Skype. And we've been using Skype uh, since the beginning, pretty much. Now, we have done a couple of shows now where we were actually using Gtalk. And I must say, my experience so far with Gtalk has been very good. Um, uh, people say they don't have good experience. I don't know if it's, it's a, it comes down to a bandwidth issue. Same problem with Skype. Skype will downgrade the video quality based on your bandwidth and your audio quality as well, uh, based on the available bandwidth or the bandwidth that, that it thinks you have. So is that what's happening with um, the, the Gtalk for other people? Maybe. Uh, maybe you have a different version. I am running on a Mac. So maybe there's something different on the Mac. Maybe it's my input method. Maybe it's the card I'm using to get video uh, back into the guest or back or even out from the guest for that, for that matter. So um, that's something to look at. Now we're playing with other ones as well. There are also, also some hardware solutions. Um, I have and the people who have actually used Google Hangouts with great success. Um, the only thing about a Google Hangout is there's lots of stuff on the screen, so you need to find a way to crop that out. So depending on what you're using for switching, like where are you using an ATM switcher, it's not very easy to crop that kind of stuff out. Now, um, we also are now starting to use Wirecast, and if Wirecast has the ability to do some of that stuff, so we may be able to use that in the future to cut it out as well. Uh, but then at that point, we're relying completely on the recording from Wirecast, and right now we're recording twice. We're basically recording the old way, which goes to a, um, a uh, hard drive, or not hard drive, but a, uh, I can't think of what it is. That's an SSD drive. Whew, man. And it goes to an SSD drive, and uh, we take it over and we copy it off. Now, to, we are also recording on Wirecast. Now, last week, the Wirecast recording didn't work for us because we had a few things set up wrong, with, um, but this week it, we've test recorded and everything comes back fine and we should be able to leave here and not have to worry about that but it's nice to have that backup so we would still probably want to go physically into the atem so that would mean for us that if we do something in a hangout that it would be have those edges around it and things around it that we don't really like uh which is acceptable um I just I would prefer it not to be that way. And we've had great luck with Skype. The quality with Skype is very good, so we're going to stick with Skype. But we're definitely playing with other solutions. Um, there is a new service, well, it's, it's new, at least first I've heard of it, that allows you to actually do the switching on uh, in the cloud, basically, and supports remote guest capability. And I'm, going, I'm playing with that, and I haven't quite gotten the remote guest thing working quite right yet. But if it does work, that is a, a very possible solution and it's free. So you could be switching free. Hopefully in the next week or two, I get to show you that after I work, figure out how it all works. Uh, the basic switching part seems to be working fine. Uh, it's just using regular off the shelf webcams. So hopefully that we can um, be talking about that here in the near future. And again, it's all cloud-based, so you don't have anything on your side, just a webcam or two, and your guests have the same thing, and you can bring them in remotely uh, through the software. So um, that hopefully in the next uh, week or so, maybe depending on what we do with the other, other thing, uh, we'll get a chance to actually show that to you. So the other thing about remote guests, so we've been talking about Skype, and it works, Skype works great for video and audio, but what if you're just doing an audio show? Do you really need to go through all that trouble? Well... I've had this question before, as how do you get a phone into um, your your recording? And uh, the simplest thing to do is go get Skype out. But what if you want to do multiple lines? You want to bring a, a, a call handler or something like that in. What are your options? Which is something that we're looking at for this other project. And we will have multiple lines coming in and for call-in guests. And yes, it's going to be a video show, but the guest can call in via Skype or via phone because uh, it's a tech show. So... If they have problems with the computer and they need to get help with it and they can't uh, get on the computer to call in via Skype or don't have Skype, maybe aren't that technical, they can still call on the phone. So um, that's something we're going to be doing soon. Now, I can tell you how we're going to do it initially. Um, I was originally going to use Skype and some other miscellaneous things to get uh, audio in. But what I've been playing with is we have a voice over IP system here. And it runs under the covers. It's asterisk. Um, uh, on, on top of it, it's not asterisk, there's another layer on top of it, but uh, essentially it's just asterisk running uh, on a Unix box. And we already have the phone lines and everything, and we're just going to tie in a 
a soft phone on a Mac and put multiple lines onto that soft phone and we can switch to the lines via the soft phone, come right out of the Mac and into the Mac just like we do uh, any other audio. And there's no, uh, no need to have any of the equipment it takes to get from a phone to uh, the, the soundboard. And they typically call them hybrid systems. And you can get some basic hybrid systems, single line hybrid systems for, you know, a couple hundred dollars. If you want to go with uh, a nice, really nice professional audio system, uh, um, like the Axios system, or I can't even what it's called, uh, by, it's, by, it's by Telos. It works with the Axios systems as well, without, with or without the Axios, though. Um, they're like $2,500. I don't know how many lines that is, but they're voice over IP as well. Um, and I mean, that's, you can go that high, but most people don't want to have that kind of money. The soft phone, you can get free soft phones. The one we're going to use is like $49 and I don't have a copy of it, uh, for other reasons, but they have a newer version of it out. So download the new version and it can now do multiple lines. So we're going to have basically a computer with multiple lines coming in through asterisk voice over IP, and we'll be able to take up to six calls or six people in the queue at a time and switch on and off and be able to, it's basically like using a hybrid system, uh, but all voice over IP. And that's how we're going to try it. Now, in the process of doing this, I found some very, very cool software. And let me see if I can actually uh, bring it up. This is only on a Mac, unfortunately. And let me see if I can go here and find it real quick. It is called Studio Phone. And here I'll bring it up and show you some of the things that it can do. So this is Studio Phone, and you see it can do up to a, uh, 30 simultaneous calls using SIP uh, on eight different SIP accounts. And as you look down through here, and I'll, I'll come down and scroll through some of the different interfaces, you can see you have multiple calls. You can accept or reject them. Uh, you can record them. So if you are going to pre-record the calls you would come in here and you'd hit uh, record on it and you can record it and then play you come into this screen right here and you play it back so the only thing it's issue with this is the price it's eight hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents so i have sent an email to the creator of this asking if they had a demo license so that i could actually set it up and demonstrate it here on the show to show you what it's like. So this is still cheaper than uh, a hybrid-based interface system, uh, something from Telos, for example, but it's actually more than a single-line hybrid system. If you, if you have a multi-line phone already, you could use a single-line hybrid system or a interface that goes from handset to computer, and it would be a lot less than this. So it's rather expensive for a piece of software. Let me just say that. That's just uh, my opinion. <laughs> Uh, but if I can, if it, I can get a demo copy of it, just to show you how it works, and if it's something you want to spend the money on, uh, you at least have an idea of what it does. So um, I have not heard back yet. Hopefully, I hear back, and I can get a uh, some kind of like maybe a thirty day license on it, just to uh, do some demonstration. Now, the uh, software that I'm going to use um, to do this. Let me see if I have that here on this machine. I'm not sure I have it installed in this machine. I do not have it installed in this machine. Um, it, it's called Viber, but I will get it in, installed and I can remote into the machine uh, in another show and show you how it all works. It's not working yet, so I wouldn't be able to show you it to you in, in action. But uh, it basically is an off the shelf, something you'd use in a corporate environment for a soft phone, your PC, if you're working from home. And I'm just going to set it up with up to six, it has up to six lines it can handle. And that's, I mean, six callers at a time can be in the queue. And just by software, we sit here and we pick which one we want. I'm looking at options. It does have an API, but from what I can tell from the API, it's a, a little bit limited on what it can do uh, as far as uh, accepting certain line phone calls on that. So we have to work the workflow around it yet. And uh, what I have a producer in the other room or a director in the other room doing it for me, or what I have to do it myself, that's the kind of thing we're kind of working out. Uh, it being running on a computer, we can pretty much control it from anywhere, but I'd like to make it more physical, like or actually take a button, and maybe build a button interface you know, using some of these that we're using for the switcher and you know take things on and offline. Um, so we're still trying to figure all that kind of stuff out. Um, 
that's still in progress. And I'll be able to show you a lot more. I can show you that the phone itself is very easy to use uh, with a mouse. So if it takes somebody to use clicking the mouse in to bring the line active, that, that's what it takes. But it's, and again, it's, you know, 49 bucks compared to the $199 for something like this uh, or, you know, a physical Telos type system. And I think it's Telos. Telos was a great product. If you have the money for it, strongly recommend a Telos hybrid system. They work, they work great. All right, so we're going to continue with the um, whole remote guest thing probably in the next couple weeks as well. As we develop our stuff, we're going to keep talking about uh, how we are, are doing that as well. So um, I have mentioned before about us uh, building a switching product, I think. Um, and this is something I definitely talked about on the show following this one, let's make it, where we're going to physically build, build a physical video switch versus using things like like these core controllers to switch. Um, you know, I have these two core controllers. Next, I'm going to do a video on all this stuff here soon. There's another core controller. Uh, that's how I'm doing all the video switching now. And I am going to do um, some videos on how all that works. This is all, I'm going to give all this code away too. It's already out there actually. Um, if you still, I'm going to publish it in a more, or a more well-known place. I just haven't gotten that far yet. Um, so that, um, you can download these if you can buy the core controllers for you know 30 bucks and plug them into into your computer and this is actually controlling uh both an atem and wirecast simultaneously so um you know it it's a it's an inexpensive way to control but isn't the same as having the physical buttons if you're used to a control surface this is uh definitely much different than um than physically having the buttons. Cause this is like weird controls. They have slide controls or there volumes and knobs. There are buttons, but you can't tell where they are cause they're not sculpted or, or sculpted. So you can't tell what's center and all that stuff. So you, you'll still pick it up. I have white gaff tape on it. That's just so I know where my fingers are, but having to look at them all the time. So um, we are working on physical. I have the boards. I have the first set of boards and I'm working on the code for it right now. So hopefully in the next month or so, uh, being vacation times, through here through july and august uh, i'm not really going away anywhere but i have family coming in spending time with family so all that kind of stuff but it's going to be a little bit slow and summertime is always a little bit slow because there's lots of things going on but um hopefully sometime august or so i'll be able to have something physical to show you it might not be in a nice pretty case yet but i should have something to be able to show you and i have a lot of uh, ideas I don't call them dreams because I'm already designing parts of them, so they're com starting to come true. But I have a lot of ideas going forward with how to expand. Uh, and this design I'm doing is a pluggable design, and there's all kinds of other things. I'll, I'll talk about all stuff in, in the future as well. But it gets away from these inexpensive controls that aren't designed to do this. And uh, it's a little more expensive because the buttons themselves are like $13 a button. So you figure how many buttons on a control surface, you can kind of figure out what the cost is going to be to uh, design something like that. So that's all uh, work in progress as well. All right, so for this week, I think I covered what I wanted to cover. Um, what I was planning this week, I can't do until at least Wednesday. Uh, my web designer says he'll have everything ready by Wednesday. And so next Monday, I'll be able to tell you about something. It's very exciting for me. Um, some people may just think, ah, no big deal, but it uh, opens up a whole new uh, path for some of our shows or some new shows uh, for us as well. And uh, this whole call management was all part of this this thing as well. So there's going to be a lot more shows showing up here very soon. Let's just put it that way. That's a little bit of a tease, but I'm going to uh, show you next week. We'll be able to tell you how we're going to do that. And they're not all technical. In fact, I'm looking for non-technical shows right now. And, uh, uh, that's a part of this whole whole thing that's going on. All right, so I think I'm going to shut it down for this week. I do want to remind you before we go, though, that uh, our YouTube channel is moving. Uh, you only have one more week of hearing me tell you this, and then we'll be uh, we'll, won't say any more. We are moving all of our shows to one YouTube channel. It is youtube.com slash techzentv, and we will... We, our shows are already there. In fact, they're all there for multiple weeks now. Every show will be there for six weeks on both channels, and we have one more week till we get six. And on the seventh week, the old channels aren't going to go away. The old channels will remain because lots of people are still finding them via searching, and our website still points to the old ones as well. Uh, we didn't go through all of our shows and, and go back to the, the back episodes and change that. So we, they're not going to go away. However, the new shows will stop showing up 
on the old channels and only be on the new channels. So along with that, we also have a new Twitter. Well, actually, it's, it's Twitter has existed. Uh, we're just going to move all the shows to um, at TechZen TV, and we're going to start using hashtags for each show. Again, for the same reason, it makes it easier to get things out. It's one channel. Auto automation gets simpler. It's uh, cross-promotion between shows. Some people didn't know we had all these other shows, and this is helping a lot by going to the single YouTube channel. In fact, we even went to a single podcast channel now as well that you can um, sign up for if you, if you want to get all the shows versus the individual shows. So that's out there now as well. So we have it. That's going to remain separated, though, as well, because people that don't want to download all the shows can just download the ones that they're interested in. And of course, if you want show notes, go to tech-zen.tv or you can go to newmediatech.tv. And when you get there, just click on the New Media Tech Show. Our show notes are out there uh, for every show. Uh, any links we talk about, things like that, are all going to be in those show notes. I uh, also want to mention that we do have a Roku app. So if you have a Roku box and you want to watch it on the big screen, we'd love to have that. Uh, definitely go download, check it out on Roku. Um, you can... You know, pop on the big screen, watch all the past episodes, all that stuff. It's all out there, uh, all ready to go. So you can make us big on the big screen and uh, come uh, uh, join us there. So the other thing is we recorded this show live every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. That would be, what, 5 p.m. on the West Coast. And uh, UTC messes me up whenever I think it's midnight or it's midnight in London, uh, right when we start recording this show. We also have a chat room. You can come chat with us live. We'd love to have you in the chat room. You can ask us questions, give us your opinions, and we interact with the chat room while we're seeing it. It's right here, right there in front of me the whole time during the show, and I can answer questions. I can give comments. I can interact with you if you have an opinion on something. Well, I'd definitely love to do that. But if you cannot watch us live... Uh, you can always subscribe to download our shows from like iTunes or any of the other podcasting directories uh, and get our shows delivered to you completely automatically. And if you want to give us a comment, we would love to have a comment from you. You can go to the tech-send.tv or new media tech site and go to the contact section for the show and you can send us an email or you can leave us a voicemail on our Google Voice as well and we'll get that. And we love the emails. This show doesn't get many emails. Like, oh, let's make a show. We're getting one or two emails a day, uh, comments, questions, and we love that. That's like something to look forward to every day. So we love getting back uh, the comments from people. And uh, th th I did get some comments this week about the internet marketing things, and some of them were from people that I knew. Some people, some of them were not from people that I knew. I got a couple on Google Plus as well. Um, so. Um, some people were kind of offended by that. I didn't mean to offend anybody uh, about it, by it, but uh, that's just kind of how the f it went from a very, I don't know, I, I don't want to go back into that whole thing again. It was, to me, it felt like it got very scummy, slummy, scummy, whatever. And uh, I didn't want my, my name associated with that kind of stuff, so I just got out of the whole internet marketing marketing. Um, I still stayed in the different niche things. I even got rid of, I got out of some niches too because the things weren't selling very well, but Anyways, all that aside, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to uh, offend anybody by that. So I just wanted to say I'm sorry for that. All right. I think that is it for this show. We'll see you all come talk to us live next Monday at 8 p.m.